hello and welcome to another edition of Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso, and that is a Christmas tree. Not only is it a Christmas tree, it's my first Christmas tree in my own home in 24 years. And as a matter of fact, I don't think I had a Christmas tree in the trailer I lived in with my ex-wife in 1996, which was my last Christmas out. And before that, I think it was, uh, wow, 92. Anyway, wow, just took a, took a little trip back there. Anyway, so today I'm going to talk to you about the Mad Jacker or Mad Jackers on the Loose in Federal Prison. Now, most of you guys who've been in prison know exactly what I'm talking about. And they also know that the proper term is not Mad Jacker, but it's Gunner or Gunslinger. And that is one who cannot control their sexual urges around female staff. They instead choose to openly masturbate in front of female staff. Now, this is a thing. It's a real thing. I and another buddy of mine coined the term Mad Jacker. And maybe some other people have used it too. But uh, we coined it after there was a guy that uh, we once saw get pulled off the yard um, he was walked up in front of a female and just began getting it and they were pulling him away. And as they were pulling him away, he was still going and he looked just mad. So we started calling him Mad Jackers after that. And that's a true story. So, okay, so let's get into this. So um, my first experience with somebody who uh, couldn't control the urges around female staff was in Chino back in 1995, six, I'm sorry. And the guy was from San Pedro. I don't remember his name, but it was uh, one of my homeboys. Uh, it was from lower San Pedro. And uh, he used to put sheets up around his bunk. I was living in Chino at the time in, in uh, Redwood Hall. And uh, it's all open, open, uh, open dorm with bunk beds. So he'd put sheets up around his bed so you couldn't see inside or whatever. But what I didn't realize, and, and I had no reason to realize because I don't, I, what, I never looked in somebody's bed area. That's a no-no. But I, I did see the guy's sheets up every day. But what he was doing was he was putting sheets around him and he was keeping a crack about that big so he can stare out his little crack and look right at the staff's office. And what he would do is he would watch the female guard, a, a lady named Mrs. Johnwell. I'll never forget it because she caught on and she went and ripped the sheets down and caught him in the act. But that was the first time that I had ever seen anybody, uh, you know, uh, that was that was uh, um, fixated on a female staff member for the purpose of sexual gratification. So when I went to Leavenworth, and this is in, um, I got there in September 98, but <clears throat> let's just say it was within the first year. There was an area, which was the, the movie theater slash auditorium. And uh, in that area, is right outside of the, the kitchen area for anybody who's been to Leavenworth, USP Leavenworth, now FCI Leavenworth. But um, you know what I'm talking about, the old, the old theater, which was the auditorium. Uh, there was um, a door that had a little crack on it. And there in the morning, female staff would walk by. Actually, it was a female nurse. They were on their way to the hospital. And there was some guys who worked in the rec center who realized that these certain females were walking by that they kind of fancied, I guess you'd say. And uh, they posted up a spot and they would watch them and they'd all jerk together in tandem, uh, you know, three to five guys at a time, just, just, just getting it, you know, peeking out the crack this big, you know, they probably got a whole 15 seconds of, of actual female sight but you know nevertheless they were that was their thing that's what they did um after that there was a guy who lived in a block <clears throat> now in leavenworth i lived in b lower most of my time b lower in the shoe i was in and out of the shoe but they always put it back to my unit which was b lower I came up with the program called the casey model program and that was where it's like a step down program for, for guys that, that just uh, misbehaved a lot, which I did. Uh, if you got two dirty urines in a year, you'd go to this. If you got a, a violence, 
you'd go to this and I had multiple dirty urines in a year and a couple of violence in a year. So I was a prime candidate. So at night they would let us uh, go to dinner and then they would lock us back in. Some nights it was our wreck. We'd get to stay out an extra hour or whatever it was. And um, that's what happened when I told you when I, what I'm about to say. There was a guy in A Block and his name was Double P. Now Double P I knew from the shoe because he used to go in and out of the shoe a lot, but he went because he was a mad jacker. <clears throat> he would commonly get in trouble uh, peeking out his cell door. He'd, he'd crack his cell door open and he would masturbate to the female staff on duty and, and he'd get knocked off and sent to the hole. So there was one night that, that there was a female guard working and I think she, I think she played professional basketball was the rumor and uh, big girl and uh, she sat outside and sitting on her desk and double P was posted up outside of his cell. He had a chair, he had brand new sweatsuit on, all pressed, gray sweatsuit. And he's a uh, kind of guy that came out of this, still stuck in the 70s. You know, he had the, the 70s fro, he had the, the jive walk. He wasn't, it wasn't swagger, it was jive. It was that, that walk, you know, he, he was 70s cool. Well, he uh, then started cleaning his cell out, putting a bunch of smell good, so it smelled good, you know, like he was a, he was a clean brother and he just wanted, he wanted the, the, the smell to attract the female guard. So I peeped this, I see what's going on and, and I'm running around getting high. Drunk, high, whatever, I don't, who knows? I was always drunk or high though at that time. And I see what's going on, I start laughing and I tell my bro, I said, hey, Head, watch this. So Head was my celly at the time. And um, I walked over to Double P and I said, hey man, when you just took your clothes to, to the washing machine, that broad was checking you out. He's like, for real? And I said, yeah, for real. And I said, man, uh, she's, got, she's got it for you, man. She's got the hots for you. He's like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, well. <laughs> Double P uh, went back to his cell and I guess he got his blanket and sat outside in front of his cell getting it, watching her. <laughs> oh, bro. I can still see his face. He was just shocked when she, when she hit the deuces, pushed the alarm button on him. Like, you know, he, he, he looked at me like, I th what happened, Rob? <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, so he got sent out. So from there, let's let's skip to Lewisburg. Now Lewisburg was a special place. Um, these mad jackers, a lot of them are. are it's uh, geographical and it's really strange. <clears throat> People don't realize that that every prison, every prison system is different. Every prison and every prison system is different. No two prisons are alike. You can get some that are close, but no two prisons are alike. And um, the inmates from from. State to state, uh, sometimes county to county are different. Different things are more acceptable in, cert in certain state systems than they would be in the federal system or a different state system. For example, when I did time in the Arkansas Department of Corrections, homosexual activity was, was, was condoned. I mean, it was like, it was a thing to have a boy. It was, it was no big deal. Uh, you know, and it, and it boggled my mind. Um, you know, everybody was, it, there was just, everybody was getting their sex on. I don't know. It was, uh, you know, a lot of rapes, uh, pre pressure punks, pressure rapes. You'd say that that's, that's not, uh, that's, that's guys that were scared and gave it up is what I'd say. It was, it was a mess. I mean, it was, it was, it was a freak show really. Now I went to California a little bit later. Anything like that would be, you'd be hurt. Not to say there's not some kind of homosexual activity going on between people. There was. Amongst the white guys in Chino, at least, that that was not happening, at least not out in the open, maybe on the down low or under the darkness of night, but that was not happening. But again, in Arkansas, it was. So likewise, there's different state prisons where uh, where mad jacking is common um, and acceptable and, and, and part of the norm. And one of the places uh, that it is, uh, is, was the District of Columbia. So... They had Lorton Prison. I don't know what went on in Lorton. I heard a lot of things about it. But uh, a lot of guys from D.C. Uh, were gunners, gunslingers, mad jackers. Uh, I, mean, I mean a lot. And, and to, to prove what I'm saying, they had 
a brand new shoe they built during the time that I was there in Lewisburg. They got rid of the old shoe because it was infested with uh, mice and rats. It was just nasty. They moved the shoe temporary to B block and then they opened the shoe back up and it was four stories. And let's say there's, I think there's 240, 260 guys in the shoe and that could be low because that was what Leavenworth had. But let's just say, for example, there was 240 people in this special housing unit. On the bottom floor, so let's just say 60 guys on the bottom floor, 70 to 80% of the bottom floor was mad jackers or gunners. And out of that 70, 80%, 90, and, I, and I'm just coming up with those numbers, but I'm telling you, and I, the guys that were Lewisburg knows what I'm saying, 90% were from DC. Not here to disrespect DC guys. I got some good friends from DC. Uh, met some good guys from DC. Uh, I'm just stating a fact. North Carolina, a lot of guys from North Carolina are gunners and, and stuff like that. Sorry, guys. Uh, and I got a good friend, but I, I'm just saying that there was uh, there was also a big group of guys from North Carolina that were in the shoe for um, for gunning, gunslinging. And that, that was at Leavenworth, so not at Lewisburg, but that was at Leavenworth. And I, I'm not saying a whole range, but I knew five or six at a time from North Carolina. Again, one of my closest dudes is from North Carolina. I'm not, and I know guys that are, I know that there's at least three guys on this YouTube channel that are, that have subscribed to me from North Carolina. Man, you guys, it's not what I'm trying to do. So, okay, maybe I'm out of pocket, but I I think there's a lot of people that have backed me up and, and that that's, that's the truth. That's from my personal account, all right? Well, some of the, the Mad Jackers from DC at Lewisburg, what they did was there's wreck cages and the wreck cages are literally dog kennels. Um, you can't, we, they used to put six of us in there at a time. And, uh, I don't, I don't know, nine by nine, you know, it was, it was the tiny dog kennels. Okay. And these guys were already in there for this, uh, sexual offense. They're in the shoe for walking up to women and, and, and whipping out their thing and, and jerking off or peeping out a crack was most commonly and getting caught watching a girl. Uh, that was, um, that was the, the thing, the norm. These guys from DC, and what was that? the one guy? He was the, he was the, the leader, the ringleader of, of them all. They would go out in the wreck cage and they would stare up at the gun tower. And, and let me tell you, the gun tower was, was, was not close. When you look up and you see the officer, what you really see, you can't see, if the officer's inside, you can't see the person's body. What you can see is a silhouette. You can, that's, that's what it is. You're looking at a silhouette. You're not looking at the whole person's physical body. And these guys will go out in the, these guys will go out in the wreck cage and, and turn and face them and all at the same time. Boom, boom, boom. Or they would do one at a time. They'd make a circle so the other ones couldn't see and one would be watching. They'd circle around their buddies while the other one was sitting there gunning down the broad on the tower. I, this, this, you can't make this stuff up. And uh, I know other guys on YouTube have talked about this, uh, but th these are my experiences. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, these, these are just like sex offenses. These are... Uh, these are sex offenses. These are sex offenders, right? I mean, that's the way I looked at it. So the, the last one I'll talk about, this kid was from Memphis, Tennessee, and he called himself Front Page. So that's Front Page News. So in other words, he was he was a, he was a, a, a real motherfucker. Uh, he, was a, he was a badass, you know? Uh, he made the Front Page News when he committed crimes. That's, that's kind of what, what he was saying, but with that nickname. And, uh, you know, he wasn't, you can tell the guy was a little off. Well, for almost a year, he'd go to the yard first thing in the morning and everybody would see him walk out there real early. What nobody knew was up on top of the building. So when you go to the yard at Butner 1 where I was at, there's there's uh, buildings. There's You have Georgia Tech when you first walk outside. And then you have State, I think it was. It's the back of State unit. But if you go a little farther, you can get up on State's wall or the back of the building and you climb on top. And if you get on the roof and look down, you're looking down inside of an, of an office, of a staff member's office, specifically a female staff member's office. So what Front Page was doing was going up there and he'd smoke cigarettes, contraband cigarettes. You know, most people there did, but a lot of people did smoke cigarettes watch the girls and, and, and do his thing. <laughs> yeah. 
for a long time, this guy did it. I mean, nine months or a year for sure. And I, the day they got him, man, I just, I'll never forget the, the, you heard the female, I can hear it from the yard. The female staff member scream. She's going in there about her business and she sees a shadow. It's a skylight. It's, it's a, it's actually like a plastic dome over it. But I guess she saw his shadow and she looked up and screamed, ah, screamed. There's this guy down there you know, looking, looking at her. <laughs> you know. But um, that's real. That's real stuff. This, this is real stuff that's going on. And there's mad jackers all over the federal system. And they come in all different shapes, <laughs> forms, and sizes. Um, so maybe a lot of you were aware of this and maybe you're not. But I, I thought of this today. I was actually going to tell a different story. Um, I was actually listening to a YouTube guy from Spain. My wife was translating. It was a former prisoner. And he was talking about uh, prison rape in Spain back in the 70s and stuff. And then this, this came to mind. That's how I just came up with it. And I started, I was driving home from, from uh, bringing my wife to work this morning. And uh, I was just laughing, thinking about uh, putting this, put this YouTube clip up. Uh, because to people that don't know prison life, I mean, this is bizarre stuff. And again, you know, I'm laughing. I, and I am because I just, it's, it's, it's like insanity, you know. Maybe I have PTSD from all the stuff I saw in prison for real, and I can laugh it off. But that, that's those are sex crimes. If you're gonna do like, what's the next step after that? Rape? I mean, I, I think so. And I and if and if some of you guys that are watching this YouTube, and if you guys have done it and maybe got away with it or something, you know, sorry, I'm not, I don't mean to call you a rapist, man. I'm just saying, you know what I mean. And I know a bunch of guys know what I mean. I know exactly. They know exactly what I'm saying. And. um that's all I'm going to say for today. So if you go to prison, just watch out for those mad jackers because it sucks to see one. It sucks to get blinded by one and get, you're walking around a corner, all of a sudden, boop, you walk up on these guy, guy or group of guys. That's even worse. When you walk up on a group of guys that are all doing it and they're all staring at the female, you know, it's like, man, it's, it's scarring. It's mentally scarring. Anyway, uh, have a good day. Bye.